Well, it's quite a mixed bag of uh, topics I want to discuss in today's video. Thanks for clicking on to the Friday edition of Hogan's European Outlook. <clears throat> These are the current temperature anomalies across the continent as we uh, really quickly approach the end of, uh, of April. Cold continent, temperatures now starting to come up as expected across the British Isles. But uh, when you factor in, in um, what's going on at the moment across the upper levels of the atmosphere, across the northern hemisphere, there is reason to believe anyway that we could start to see the temperatures coming back down. But how quickly that drop comes will be significant in terms of where this April ends up in terms of the overall temperature anomaly. I know, I know the central England temperature is reasonably warm, so we'll probably end up warmer than normal for the CET uh, for April. Um, but certainly, you know, looking at the entire British Isles and Ireland, it's going to be quite interesting to see where we end up because the... Um, the North Atlantic Oscillation and the Arctic Oscillation are expected to go quite deeply negative. Uh, it is now trending back into negative territory with the Arctic Oscillation. And the North Atlantic Oscillation, by the way, could be heading towards the deepest levels that we've seen in well over a year. Or in fact, probably since say, around about this time last year, when of course we've seen the coldest April in the, since the 1980s. And the coldest may since i believe the the 90s or could be the 80s i can't remember i think the opening i think it was shran bruin that tweeted that um the, the opening seven days of may 2021 was in fact the coldest since i believe the 1970s so um a couple of other tweets coming out about the uh, you know you know april being the coldest in in several years or may starting off the coldest in quite some time is is pretty much nonsense because uh, you only have to look back to this time last year and we were in the midst of a very very unusual spell of cold weather for the british isles so you know short memories of course always a problem when it comes to weather we tend to forget what happened even last week never mind you know 10 20 30 years ago but uh, certainly temperatures like i say coming up after a very cold start uh, to April, still not on par with last year, may I add, but uh, it was a cold first half to April. We've seen a recovery in temperature and uh, the projection is for a downward trend in temperature as we go forward. Now, the the, um, the GFS ensemble uh, looks like this here. So this is the upcoming five-day period. And, uh, of course, we've got the, the area of high pressure to the north-northwest. We've got a lot of negative here over southern portions of Europe. Of course, massive, dramatic change in in weather across Spain and across southern France. Remarkable stuff indeed. And uh, it is always interesting when you see at this time of the year, uh, 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 kind of, uh, uh, you know, when you're at the junction between two different seasons, winter, you know, in the spring and in the, the summer itself, can create some very dramatic weather and fluctuations and um, bouncing between summer conditions and winter conditions. The atmosphere is fighting against uh, the, the different air masses at this time of the year, and you get some very interesting stuff indeed. Uh, so the upcoming five days looks like this, but as I play through the loop, you can see here where the positive starts to really dominate the, uh, the far north of the uh, hemisphere here. And what we're seeing is the trough uh, dropping into eastern North America and into Europe as well, including the British Isles. So this is quite a cool signal, actually, for the time of the year. And if you look at the 2 meter temperature anomalies here for the same uh, time frame here, you can see that the contrast, the difference now starting to show up here. So we start off quite warm in the upcoming five-day period, especially across the eastern half of the United States. But notice that even the UK, we're starting to lose that warm anomaly. But as I play through the loop here, you can see how, here how the troughs start to drop into eastern North America, western portions of Europe here. And we turn cold for the end of April, beginning of, of May. And it's going to be interesting to see where the, the overall temperature anomaly winds up for the month of April when all is said and done here. Dramatic scenes out of Spain. This was the scene in some high elevations of Iberia here over the last couple of days here. Just amazing to see heavy record-breaking snowfall um, 
you know, across, like I say, the higher portions of Iberia, considering that temperatures were in the upper upper 20s to low 30s quite widely across these very areas that are seeing heavy snowfall and record breaking snowfall for the time of the year. And I believe it's the, the biggest snowfall for parts of Spain in the month of April in some 20 years or so. So uh, always amazing to see uh, this kind of, um, you know, this kind of flip around, uh, so to speak, taking place. Looking at the global temperature normally for today, you can see here that we are um, sitting on 0 0.1 Celsius above normal globally. Northern Hemisphere at 0 0.4, at 0 0.2 below normal in the Southern Hemisphere with the Antarctic still very chilly indeed with temperatures at Concordia, three consecutive nights, I believe, of minus 75 or lower, and daytime temperatures that are not getting above minus 70. So unusually cold for this time of the year in parts of Antarctica, the tropics at 0 0.2 Celsius. Look at the Arctic here. This is actually quite interesting, considering that the Arctic Oscillation is going into negative territory, which you would typically expect the temperature to come up with a building high pressure over this region you typically find that the arctic is colder when you've got lower pressure over the region and that kind of traps some of the cold underneath but when you start to raise the height you typically warm the arctic up we will probably see the arctic warming up as the uh, the arctic oscillation uh, goes negative we'll start to see the high pressure building over the, the region over the pole we will st start to see that temperature rising and i think what we're going to start to see is the mid latitudes turn colder, especially North America and Western Europe here. I told you it was a wee bit of a mismatch of a uh, discussion today. The uh, solar cycle looks as if it's starting to kind of uh, rise quite steeply, actually. We're now starting to come and pulling away quite quite quickly now, I think, from the minimum that we've seen occur around about 2019-20. Uh, we are at a similar stage to where we were about 2011, kind of later 2011-12. It looks as if we're at the same period now, um, back to two the, you know, the, the cycle 24, when we're starting to kind of climb out of that minimum at the end of 2008-9. We've seen, uh, what, the reason why I'm mentioning that is because we've seen some fairly cool summers back then. And, uh, of course, when you start to look towards uh, the summer of 2022, based purely on the solar cycle, you would almost expect to see something a little bit cooler taking place, uh, like I say, solely based on this. But we may uh, possibly be looking towards something. But, it's, you know, there is, there is definitely a disconnect, I think, with the warmer world that we have now compared to even 10 years ago. Uh, you know, the global temperature is warmer. The sea surface temperatures are warmer as well. And I personally could be mistaken here, but I think we've not seen as much of an influence from the sun with the minimum this time around. So, you know, that occurred in 2019-20 versus 2008-2009. So therefore, it's hard to really truly gauge are we going to see a summer like 2011, which was quite a chilly summer across British Isles? It's hard to say that because we've got a warmer overall planet, both in the seas and in the atmosphere. So it's going to be very interesting to see what takes place this upcoming June, July and August period in terms of the temperature, in terms of the overall upper pattern. The Atlantic is warmer. The overall net sea surface temperature globally is warmer and therefore we get a different response to the atmosphere i think but certainly we are rising quite sharply we're seeing a lot of activity taking place within the sun we're seeing uh, a couple of tweets now coming out now this is way way out with my understanding but certainly the, an interesting tweet an x 1.1 solar flare was observed this morning this was easter by the way and is the third strongest solar flare of the cycle 25. The X-class flare uh, are big, major events that can trigger radio blackouts around the world and long-lasting radiation storms in the upper levels of the atmosphere, which is quite interesting. And that can affect things like GPS and whatnot, uh, solar storms that uh, cause uh, issues with um, telecommunications on, on Earth. 
This is another tweet here. Ex Fleur for Easter. Our sun celebrates by firing one of the largest flares of this new solar cycle. So the sun's starting to become more active. And that's quite interesting. And what, personally, from my understanding, if the sun becomes more active, it's releasing more energy and essentially more heat. Now, of course, if you had a, a El Nino in place at this point in time, you would expect the Earth's temperature to rise reasonably quickly and reasonably significantly, I think, uh, into the upcoming summer season. But the La Nina is supposed to re-strengthen somewhat. Third year La Nina, not happened since 2000. And of course, back then, we had uh, pretty much a, so a solar maximum so we've seen some very record-breaking temperatures, of course, 98, 99, that kind of time era. So there's so many things that goes in to building the forecast, you know, including the sun. But certainly this activity that we're seeing at the moment could have telecommunication issues on Earth, you know, within the next couple of weeks, according to uh, some of these uh, scientists that are releasing these tweets. Very, very interesting stuff indeed. And it's going to be interesting, the counterbalance between La Nina trying to keep the temperature of the Earth down while the sun's starting to kind of reinvigorate, trying to release more energy towards the Earth. And, of course, uh, there could be quite the fight, quite the battle, so to speak, going on, I think, between uh, what's going on within um, the oceans releasing to the atmosphere and, of course, the incoming uh, solar radiation and energy from the sun here. So uh, there is a heck of a lot of things going on and worth considering. Uh, finally, looking at the um, the CFSV2 projections for the sea surface temperature uh, during the course of the summer season and even into the autumn season. So this is, of course, the period May through July. You can see a very distinct La Nina in place, very warm waters over Indonesia and around that. Very warm water, if you notice here, off southeast Australia. I reckon we're going to see more heavy rainfall, by the way, down here across Sydney, Melbourne, up towards, um, you know, possibly up towards Brisbane and whatnot. It's going to be interesting to see very heavy precipitation surrounding Indonesia. Uh, my partner and I are supposed to be going to Bali in September, so it's going to be interesting to see what kind of weather we'll see. Obviously, it's typically hot and humid, it, we're supposed to be there during the dry season, but, you know, um, it, I think there's a lot of uh, variations in the weather at the moment, and there's a lot of oddities uh, given uh, what we're seeing. What is worth pointing out, by the way, very warm North Atlantic here, so I expect to see a busy hurricane season this year. If, if we play through this, you can start to see the Arctic temperatures warming up significantly here, so another low uh, Arctic sea ice season, I think, the melt season quite uh, significant, I think, uh, within the Arctic region here. Notice the La Nina still holds firm the period August through October. Watch the, the uh, Indian Ocean. Look at how much it cools as we push towards next winter. That's very interesting to see. Look at how colder compared to normal. The model is at least showing. The waters even surrounding Africa look quite chilly as well. It'll be interesting to see the belt within the tropics over the next you know six months or so. Do we start to see the temperatures coming down significantly with this third year, rare third year La Nina in place? It's going to be interesting to see the response in terms of the Earth's atmosphere and also the lower tropospheric temperature as well. We'll be keeping a close eye on that to see what goes on. So yeah, uh, uh, you know, a lot of things uh, that have been made mention of in this video today, and you, uh, I know it's a bit of a, uh, you know, a, a very mixed bag, but there is just basically looking at all the different parameters, all the things that are going on out there uh, that, you know, keep keep weather and climate so, so fascinating indeed. Even when the weather may seem, uh, ab you know, very quiet and disappointing uh, here, there is always stuff going on. And uh, really right here um, on marvelwindweather.com and the YouTube channel, these are all the things, all the factors that I look at. Might not fully understand what I'm looking at, but certainly uh, I can give you my interpretation of what, what I'm looking at here. So um, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please, of course, like, share and subscribe to the channel. And I will try to be back again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.